I've been making some serious progress on my robot, although I haven't upgraded the remote control yet. This is mainly because it's perfect, but I'm gonna make some minor adjustments nonetheless. And with them, the robot should be able to do some interesting stuff. So, this is my current controller and I know what you're thinking. Why isn't it in that beautiful plastic cap? It's because I added this slider and hooked it to the height of the robot. So when I move the slider up, the robot lifts from the ground and when I move it down, the robot crouches. I'm gonna add more buttons, joysticks and make an actual controller. But before that, I need to change something. Since my last video, I changed all of the friction caps so the legs don't vibrate as much. But now the hexapod doesn't fit onto the stand because I increased the size of the coxa joint. Since I've increased the size of the coxa joint, this gap doesn't exist and these arms have nowhere to go, so I'm gonna make them shorter. The arms are now shorter, so they don't need this gap at all. The stand is fixed, so let's make the controller. First, I made a sketch on my new whiteboard I got recently. Then for each of the controls, like the joystick, the switch, the sliders and the button, I printed these attachments. When you print stuff, the plastic always expands and shrinks, so the dimensions change. Therefore, I always print smaller sections of the final part to get the dimensions right, and then at the end I print the whole part. I modeled the full controller and now I'm gonna slice it in Crow, which generates the G-code for my 3D printer. But before I do that, I'm gonna show you the power of bigger nozzles. With the standard 0.4mm nozzle, this print takes about 7 hours. And when I change it for a 1mm nozzle, it takes only 3. Just as I started printing the controller, the silicone I ordered in my last video finally came, so I can finish the feet for my robot. The molds are made from two pieces bolted together and the plastic tip of the leg clicks into place. The silicone is made from parts A and B. Part B is 2% of the mixture, but how the fuck do you measure that, so I'm gonna put more and this should also make it solidify quicker. The feet should be solid in an hour or two, so let's assemble the controller. Both of the joysticks are bolted to the base plate, the two sliders click into place, the button is bolted, the switch and the battery click into place, and there's a breadboard in the middle. Alright, the easy part is done, now I'm gonna wire up the electronics. I've just connected the battery through a switch to the Arduino, and I'm reading its voltage through a voltage divider, because if you drain the battery, you basically destroy it. The battery is at about 12 volts right now, and I thought about adding a capacitor to smooth out the readings, but the waveform is already smooth, so I don't need it. I also added an indicator light for the battery. Now it's blinking because the battery is turned off, and this indicates a low voltage. When I turn on the battery, the light stays on, and this indicates that the battery is sustainable. So in practice, when I turn on the controller, the battery is gonna be on, and if the voltage gets too low, it starts blinking. I've just connected this button, and it's gonna control the gates of the robot. 
So there's a counter in the code and when you press this button it increases the value of the counter by one. And each value is gonna correspond to a gate, which is basically the movement type of the robot. And by pressing this button you're gonna cycle through these gates. So this is the value of the counter. And you can see that when I press it, it always increases by one. And then it overflows. And sometimes when you connect buttons like this, you get a problem called bouncing. Which is when you press the button once, but it sends a few signals. And this is due to the mechanical vibrations of the button. I don't have this problem, so I didn't have to do any debouncing. The sliders have been added. I actually connected them wrong at first, so I blew one up. But fortunately I bought three. And here you can see the value of the slider. I've just added both of the joysticks and also the transmitter. And now this thing is basically done. You can see that when I move the joystick it tracks its movement. It goes up and down. And now it's time to do the hardest part, which is connecting the transmitter to the receiver. If this isn't the best looking controller you've ever seen, I don't know what is. After a few painful hours, I managed to connect the robot to the transmitter. So I'm gonna take him outside and see how he walks. But before that, I'm gonna attach the silicon feet. Alright, let's see how he walks with his new feet. So the robot took one step and the feet immediately fell off. Well, there goes 10 hours of my life. At least my dog likes them. Hopefully we'll have better luck with the controller. You control the movement of the robot with the right joystick. And with the right slider you control the height of the robot. If you move the left slider, you control the radial distance of the legs. And now I'm gonna change the gate. And you can see he walks differently. He lifts the legs one by one. And now I've changed it back. Before I give up on the feet, my girlfriend suggested I use super glue. I'm not sure how well it holds on silicone. But I'm gonna try that and hopefully I won't glue my fingers together because that's what happens every fucking time I try to use this. And of course I spilled the glue on my finger. If it sticks to the feet as well as it sticks to my finger, I think this should be alright. Alright, I'm gonna glue the rest of the feet, but with a key difference. This time I'm using gloves. Now I'm just waiting for the glue to dry. And I didn't bother recording the gluing, because I was too busy not spilling the glue on myself. But uh, he looks like a flower, it's kind of funny. To test the new feet, I built this obstacle course. And the robot has to tuck his feet in, so he fits in between the skateboard and the chainsaw, of course. And then he was supposed to traverse this mountain made out of shoes, and he broke his leg. After shedding a couple tears, I took the leg apart, and fortunately it wasn't a broken servo motor, it was just a loose bolt. So I tightened it and put it back together. Finally, I just played with the robot. I put a 5 liter water bottle on the ground and let him walk over it. I even tried balancing him on the top of the bottle. So yeah, this robot is starting to be real fun. The new controller works. The next step is to make a new controller with PCB that's gonna look even better, if you can believe it.